Majora's Mask, home to some of my favorite music in the entire Zelda franchise. With its darker moods and themes, Koji Kondo pulled out all the stops to give us some extremely haunting music. Heck, the Song of Healing alone is such a beautiful melody, I could talk about it for literally hours. But just like the series I did on Ocarina of Time's dungeons, now I want to talk about the four main dungeons in Majora's Mask. And today we'll start things off with Woodfall Temple, deep in the heart of the Southern Swamp, and what went into designing the temple and its music. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content. Right off the bat, let's talk about the temple itself. Rising from the waters of the poisonous swamp, we have a ziggurat. Essentially a pyramid, but with more squares. And while ziggurats were constructed in ancient Mesopotamia, which is in the modern day Middle East, they were also built in Mesoamerica, essentially modern day Mexico and the country surrounding the Yucatan Peninsula. Most of these were built by the Mayans and the Aztecs. And I specifically bring these civilizations up because a lot of the inner workings of the temple and the music is inspired by Mesoamerican culture. Most of these structures built by the Aztecs were destroyed by the Spanish conquistadors in the 1500s, but the Mayan civilization had mostly come and gone by that time, so their ruins were left a lot more intact, specifically their temples. These were regularly used for rituals, which, yes, did include human sacrifice. But the Mayan and Aztec culture were quite different. Anyways, let's get inside the temple and see what we're working with. Right off the bat, we have giant roots in the temple, because, hey, this is a forest temple. But we also have a statue of a face built into the wall here. Both the Mayans and Aztecs produced a lot of spectacular sculpture work, including many faces of people. One thing I absolutely love about this room and the rest of the temple is that we also have faces of Deku people. And it makes total sense from a world building standpoint. It's just kind of funny to see. Actually, in retrospect, it makes me wonder why there's a carving of a human face next to it. In fact, in the original game, we see these kind of Deku-Jaguar hybrid looking things on the walls. And in fact, Jaguars are huge in Mesoamerican culture, as they were one of the deadliest predators. And the most elite Aztec soldiers were called Jaguar Warriors. In the 3DS remake, these were changed to faces of the Deku King. And this is another really cool tie-in of the culture of Termina, and the culture of the Mesoamerican civilizations that this temple is inspired by. In the next room, we do have another face carving. If you're a fan of 90s Nickelodeon, you might see this and think Olmec from Legends of the Hidden Temple, which, in fact, was another ancient civilization in Mesoamerica, one that predates even the Mayans. We barely know anything about the Olmecs, apart from the giant heads that they've left in various places. Another feature in the temple is the brilliantly painted butterflies on the walls and above doors. The Mayan civilization loved cyclical imagery, believing in reincarnation and that life and in fact the entire universe went through cycles of creation and destruction. And they associated butterflies with the cycle of life itself. And the butterfly emerging from a cocoon represented the soul leaving its earthly body. It was believed if a butterfly approached you in real life, it was thought to be the spirits of one's ancestors coming to visit them. And accompanying these butterflies above the doors are also some beetles. Or at least in the 3DS version. In the original version, you get this, which I guess was supposed to be a beetle? Oh. Anyways, in Mexico there is a form of jewelry called the maquetche, which, get this, is actual live beetles that have been bedazzled with jewels and have a chain on their legs to tie them to a person's shirt to keep them from running away. And this was actually based on old Mayan folklore about the princess Kuzan, who was arranged to marry a prince. However, she fell in love with another man. Her father, Furious, sentenced the man to death. But a shaman took pity on Kuzan and turned her love into a beetle, who she then ordained with jewelry and then chained to her clothes to keep him always close to her heart. And the insects are not done just yet because we have a bunch of moths which gather around torches in the temple. And if you take the fire with you on a Deku stick, they will follow and attack Link. This is likely inspired by the Black Witch Moth, which has been a symbol of ill fortune in Central America dating back to before the Spanish arrived. And superstition surrounding it still exists to this day. It's said that if a black moth flies into a house while a person there is sick, this is a sure sign that they will die. Another feature I want to talk about is in this room with a wooden walkway above the poisonous water that Link has to maneuver a block to get by. Now, this might be a stretch, but the Aztec capital city of Tenochtitlan was built on an island, and had an incredible series of waterways and floating farms that the people could attend to on canoes, with many historians saying that the canals of the city rival that of Venice. Do I think that's what this raised walkway is trying to reference? 
Probably not. It's just a path above a poisonous water. But this is a really cool fact and I wanted to share it. Seriously, the Mayan and Aztec civilizations were rad as hell. And now, let's talk about the dungeon's boss, Odolwa, because there is a lot to cover here. In the original release of the game, the boss was a standout for me, since it's literally a giant warrior with a sword fighting against Link. There was no Zelda style, oh here's the weak point. You actually have to hack and slash this guy to victory. And then the 3DS version came along and they added an eyeball to his head. It's still a fun fight, but just why? Odowa definitely makes an impression compared to a lot of Zelda bosses. For one, he appears to be chanting various things while the fight goes on. And apparently this has been translated from actual ancient Mayan. According to multiple sources on the internet, these phrases roughly translate to head will ache and burn, come burn, and dance now. Now, the latter of these two phrases work out perfectly, since Odolwa does do a lot of dancing in this boss fight, and he does conjure up a ring of fire, limiting Link's movement. But head will ache and burn is an odd choice. And for as many times as I've listened to it, this doesn't quite sound like the phrase he's saying. Where's the ool? And for you, sir? I will have the ool. The what? The ool. I, I don't really know what that is. I don't, I don't have to have what that. What he's trying to say is ool. Guys, I, just, right. I don't really to, think I don't, that we have that's that. That's okay. Bring in the ool. I will have the spaghetti with a side salad. Now, as far as Odolwa's weapon and shield, this is the biggest break with what Mesoamerican warriors would use. While Mayans, and particularly the Aztecs, had famously strong warriors, they never used swords. And while they did have shields, they were almost always round, and were never shaped like a kite shield that we see Odolwa with. As far as the preferred weapon of the Aztecs, they would most often use what was called a makowito, which was a flat bat covered in tiny obsidian blades which would injure and maim, but likely not kill the victim, so they could hopefully take as many prisoners as possible and sacrifice them later. But hey, this is a video game set in a fictional world, and it probably would have been harder to create all the little edges on a Makowitl on the N64, so it's whatever. Next, let's talk about what Odolwa is wearing. Who are you wearing this evening? Show us, show us your outfit here. I'm wearing a she. It's not much. He's got a loincloth and a mask. And hey, they gave him some shoes, so that's something. In all seriousness, both Mayan and Aztec warriors were very mildly armored compared to what we might think of European soldiers wearing. But they did have armor that worked for the weapons that they would face in combat, primarily other weapons using obsidian blades. Both Mayan and Aztec soldiers had cotton armor that was two inches thick and treated with rock salt, which can actually withstand cuts from obsidian. But Odolwa is decked out in body paint, which is something Mesoamerican soldiers would do, often in vibrant colors and he has this purple thing draped over his shoulders, which is definitely something we would see in higher ranking members of Mayan and Aztec cultures. And hey, the game is Majora's Mask, so we gotta talk about the one Odolwa is wearing. He has bright, colorful plumage sticking out the top, which fits perfectly with Mayan and Aztec elite warriors. The face of the mask feels a little generic tribal warrior to me, but there is some evidence that Mayans wore masks into battle. And I'll definitely give them a shout out for the earrings as both Aztec and Mayans were big into jewelry to show a person's status, or in this case, how much of an elite warrior they actually were. And as another callback, Odolwa can summon more black moths to harm Link, tying back to the black witch moth mentioned earlier. Also, as a fun side note, there is record of Mayans actually collecting hornets and wasps into gourds and then throwing them at attacking enemies. So yes, they literally would throw jars of bees. Now, let's get into talking about Woodfall Temple's music. It shouldn't surprise you that once again Koji Kondo did his homework, and a lot of the instruments used also fit the Mesoamerican theme. This song is heavy on percussion, and thankfully there are a variety of different instruments to pull these sounds from. First off, we have a pretty solid beat to set a tempo. This is likely the Wei Weitel drum, known to be used by the Aztecs. The Wei Weitel is pretty typical as far as drums go. It's a cylinder with a top made of animal skin, usually from an ocelot. The important thing is the sound. The bigger they are, the deeper the pitch. Next we have this really cool jug drum sound. 
Unfortunately, this one seems to be pretty non-Mesoamerican. Honestly, it sounds a lot like a Nigerian Uru. However, this sound could totally be made by just hitting an open container with a flat palm. So it's still totally possible that people in Mesoamerican cultures could be able to create this sound, but in my research I wasn't able to find any evidence that they typically did anything like this. Next we get a sort of tribal chant. And this is just one of three samples that Koji Kondo used for this track. The sample collection this is from is called Ethnic Flavors, and the sample's name is African 13111-A. Interestingly enough, this is the same sample collection that contains the drum beat for the Shadow Temple's bongos. And I'm assuming that Kondo heard it while making that song and kept it in his back pocket for this game. Next we have these sort of shrieking sounds. And these two noises are also samples. And in what is maybe the best title for a CD of all time, the sample collection is called A Poke in the Ear with a Sharp Stick, Volume 2. In an even better twist, the titles for these specific samples used are Awkward 1 and Awkward 2. In Aztec culture, there were instruments that we today call death whistles. It's not known for sure what they were used for, but it's believed that warriors would play them together before raiding a nearby settlement to capture people for sacrifice. So this is the dead whistle. Now, if you can imagine, you're just hanging out, and then a chorus of these bad boys fills the air before a group of Aztec warriors storm your town? Well, you can envision their desired effect to spread fear. And hey, maybe how I said I think the bongo we hear the entire time in the Shadow Temple is bongo bongo, this chanting and the death whistle sounds are being made by Odolwa this entire time, trying to psych out Link before their fight. And finally is my personal favorite part of the entire song we get another absolute killer of a drum beat over top all this. Seriously, this part is what I like to imagine Darunia actually dancing to in Ocarina of Time. It is a certified bop. For me, this sounds a lot like the Tepo Nashle drum. which was created by the Aztecs. It's a fairly unique drum, made from a hollowed out log with an eight shape cut on top. The two sections have different lengths, and because of this, they both have different pitches. And the sides of the drum can also be hit for another sound. All in all, these different drums and sounds come together to form a strong, upbeat song that gives this temple its pre-Hispanic Mesoamerican vibes and brilliantly sets up the boss fight with Odolwa as this tribal warrior. But what do you think about Woodfall Temple's design and its music? Tell us about it in the comments down below. And if you're interested in more Zelda dungeon analysis, I've already done a whole series on Ocarina of Time, so consider checking out those as well. And while you're at it, we also have a Discord to discuss all things gaming. And if you have an extra buck to toss our way, maybe head over to our Patreon. But until next time, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.